you might get cash flow but no appreciation mm -hmm. and you're paying less money for it hopefully right um in the suburbs you're paying more money less cash flow and you get some appreciation mm -hmm. so you know hopefully you know you get you know there's good and bad there's give and take there's give and both. take if you don't know detroit don't buy in detroit right if you don't know the rental game to do better in their business but i also have to I don't know how to do it. So, you know, I, I remember before you say, uh, and you know, unfortunately, the camera ran out and we just kept talking. We didn't realize it for about a half hour or so. Um, but you said you have to train your buyers. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how do you how do you train your buyer and then how do you become a good buyer as well? Right. Well, yeah, training your buyers or becoming a good buyer is, you know, you do what you say you're going to do. Yep. You're going to close it. You're not you know, oh, I got to get my, I got to inspect it five times, mm -hmm. you know, but training your buyers is you send them a deal and they seem to be interested. I might tell them, look, you got a 24 hour head start. Yep. You know, if I don't, if I don't hear from you, if you're interested or not interested, I'm going to give you a 24 hour head start. Doesn't mean they have to buy it, but because it's got to work for them. I don't get mad if they don't buy it because right. it just didn't work for them. But the buyers that buy a lot, I'm, I might give them a head start. You yep. know? And it's all about communication at that point. You know, wiring the money. Nothing's like going to, you know, getting it ready to close and you're waiting on the wire. My seller signs, I want the wire to be in the bank account so my seller could get their money at closing. That's very important. <laughs> that is very important that the seller gets their money. <laughs> at closing. It's at closing, yeah. yes. They don't want to wait for uh, two days Nonsense. for the wire to come through because something happened with a because uh, you're doing a 401k transfer or whatever the case. It's coming through an IRA. Uh, yeah, they're overseas and they, it takes a few days. We got to know that stuff ahead of time. Yep. And working with the right title companies, you know, there's a few good title companies out there. I've worked with m more than one. Right. So. I remember, uh, you know, the thing is, is before we were talking about the tools that you use, and if I repeat myself, I'm sorry, um, you know, but you are an agent, right? Yep. And so as a wholesaler, um, you know, do you think we need to become an agent? Where do you think the Michigan is going to be on that? Yeah, I, there's all the benefits you should become an agent. I tell people I'm an agent. I got a license. They could show them my license that I'm an agent. I don't mm -hmm. mind that. Um, I could list a property for somebody because, you know, you're a problem solver and it might not be the right deal to wholesale, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you, you might do something else. So you could point them in the right directions. And not only do you have that you get you have access to the MLS. You can see the history of the property. You can check the comps. You could do so much. Make sure the owner is the owner um, to see what when they bought it last and how much they paid for it. So there's so many benefits of becoming an agent if you're a wholesaler. I used to preach six years ago. Don't be don't you don't need don't, yeah don't do it don't do it. I never I only use my license to check the MLS. Mm -hmm. Now I list houses, um, and if you don't want to list, you could get a referral fee because you're an agent. Yep. So there's a lot of good things, um, and eventually, you know, they're gonna make you become an agent to wholesale. Eventually, they will. Yeah. You know, they're they're doing it in other states right now, and they're gonna make it harder to become an agent. You know, now it's a simple forty hour class, mm -hmm. and the test is stupid. It's tricky. Some people it takes them three, four, five, six times to pass, mm -hmm. and not saying they're not smart, 
um, it's just the way the test is. Yep. Um, some people they pass it on the first time, but it doesn't matter. Just take it, get a license. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, if you choose to. But yeah, I think it's definitely um, a benefit. Most definitely. Now I'm not a licensed agent uh, because I don't do this full time. I you know so with that I don't have access to the MLS. So I actually use PropStream. I down below there will be a link. It is an affiliate link, but I I it is something that I do use because I don't have access to the MLS at the moment. Sure. So I pull my list from there, but I I mainly get all my comps and get all my information from there like you would do on the MLS. Yeah. You know. Uh the thing I like about that as well, and I think this is one thing that I like about PropStream versus say some other uh other ones out there is it also shows the chain of title. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um some other re they just show the last person that bought it. Yeah. And if I see on a property like that there's five quick claim deeds down, I know that closing is going to be a hassle, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, um, not to say that I won't do it. It's just, I know that it's probably going to take some time to close. So I might want to start title before I try to sell it, you know? Right. No, so. prop scene, um, I've had it, used it, you know, could for the list sake, yep. you know, there, there's good things like that, but, um, yeah, it's. I guess it's. It's not bad, mm -hmm. but an agent being an agent having access to MLS is the best. One hundred percent. That that is the best. If you're an agent, you know, by all means, that's the way to go. Yeah. So, um, I use PropStream because I'm not an agent. Right. So, uh, where do you uh, do you have any rentals, flips, things like that going on right now? Um, no, I don't have any rentals, but I have had rentals. Okay. Nothing wrong with them. Great. You know, if you're if you don't want to pay any taxes to Uncle Sam, you you know, it's really beneficial to have rentals. All right. Um and I'm not a tax advisor. Talk yep. to somebody. And um I have a dumpster you know, I was telling you I have a dumpster company, you know yep. that. I have fifteen dumpsters. I think every you know, those are my rentals. Every time I buy a dumpster, it moves, I make money. So mm -hmm. um so you know, but I could see. I used to have a lot of rentals. I could see getting in the rental game. Mm -hmm. You know, just in Detroit, it's a different type of rental. You might get cash flow, but no appreciation, mm -hmm. and you're paying less money for it. Hopefully, right. um, in the suburbs, you're paying more money, less cash flow, and you get some appreciation. Mm -hmm. So there's, a, you know, hopefully, you know, you get, you know, there's good and bad. There's give and take. There's give and both. take. If you don't know Detroit, don't buy in Detroit. Right. If you don't know the rental game, you know, partner up with someone or get somebody that knows what they're doing. Um, I do have flips. I'm working on a flip right now. We just sold one, and we, we're finishing up one. Um, so I try to, you know, I got a partner at my flipping side of the business, and we try to buy one, two, three, you know, at a time. Mm -hmm. no, no more than that. You know, when we're almost done with one, we want to be looking for another one. And then while we're selling one, we want to be finishing one. You know, it's a, a cycle. All right. So, and in the meantime, you hotel yep. instead of flipping. The flipping to me is when you take a house and you gut it and you make it beautiful. Right. right? That, and, and, and it's a five, six month process. You know, right. by the time you fix it and sell it and close it, mm -hmm. you know, type of deal. But hoteling, in the meantime, we do those two, where um, you know, put a few bucks in there and you sell on the MLS and you make more money than if you would have wholesaled it. So a hotel is instead of um, wholesaling the deal, okay, you would actually take it down yourself. So you actually own the property. Correct. Right, and you put minimal work into it. Correct. You got okay. It. Or not none at all, but right. minimal to none. Right. You might clean it out and make it look better, cut the grass, whatever, and get it on the MLS because mm -hmm. there's more different type of buyers on the MLS, investor buyers, or even a homeowner might buy it. It depends right. on the condition, right? 
Um, you might fix a couple little things, for, you know, three, four thousand dollars in repairs. And, so, and if you would have wholesaled it, let's say you would have made seven or eight thousand dollars. And if you wholesale it, you might make fifteen to twenty thousand right. or more. You know, it just depends. Right. So you might get a bidding war going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they're quicker deals because you get in and out. You could you could buy it and get it back on the market within two weeks or less. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, within two weeks or less. I mean, that that is great turnaround. Uh, you know, definitely better than a flip. Um, but you own the property, so it's not necessary. It's not a wholesale, um, and it's not a flip. But that's why they call it a wholesale. Yep. So it's like retail. Yep. Wholesale. <laughs> so, um, you know, with that, I I believe we were talking about. Uh, you know, I did want to ask, you mentioned your dumpsters that you yep. have. How did you start that dumpster business? And, uh, you know, I mean, does it bring you residual income coming through? Do you run the business? Do you, or did you hire people to run that business for you? I run the business. I hire, I got a, I got a couple drivers. Okay. I drive on the weekends. Mm -hmm. I drive in the morning sometimes. I drive at night sometimes, <laughs> whatever it takes, you know, and, um, you know, I, I know a business broker mm -hmm. and, um, I seen that it was for sale and I actually got it on a seller financing type deal. Wow. You know, I got a couple of trucks and some dumpsters and I bought a few dumpsters along the way. Mm -hmm. How long have I had it? Like since. 2019, I guess, maybe, yeah, so since 2019, 2022, almost four years, mm -hmm. probably four years, something like that, yeah, and, um, you know, it's got its advantages, during COVID, I was glad I had it, Yep. it was great, I was an essential worker, <laughs> and, and one good thing, another good thing is I get people that want to rent my dumpsters that are investors that are buyers, yep. And then I could find out what they paid for that house, what they're mm -hmm. doing to the house, and there's that that is another really good um, thing that came off of that. Awesome. So this is where, you know, he bought a business that complements his other business, you know. And not only that, but he uses negotiating skills I uh, you know, from wholesaling to negotiate with the business. So you got it on a seller finance deal. Did you have to put anything, any money down, or very little? No. All right. So you just got a monthly payment every month, and you know, however long. We don't need to go into the details of it, but um, you you can not only do this with houses, but you can do this with businesses as well. You know, uh, it's proof right here. Proof is in the pudding. <laughs> I know when I work with you i've worked with you we've jv together um mm -hmm. by all means the first deal that i did was a hundred uh one thousand three hundred and thirty three dollars that was my portion and i worked with you on that that was i i it was an awesome deal it was the deal didn't matter honestly it was just a proof of concept that it can work uh you were really good and you actually taught me everything I know. I believe I said that earlier in the beginning, but you know, for anybody else that does want a JV with you or, you know, like what's your process for JV? Yeah. Um, yeah. JV is a lot different than it's ever been in today. Yep. So, you know, I, I don't mind JV with others. Some deals I can, some deals I can't. Mm -hmm. Cause it's all going to depend. Cause I might have a, a JV, I might have a deal that I got out there, mm -hmm. but I got two other people that are already, we're working together. Right. You know, one guy does the marketing another guy does acquisitions and then I dispo or, or something in that nature. So we're splitting it three ways. There's no more room. We already got it down at the lowest that we could sell it, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, and I'm not a type of wholesaler. I, it's got to make sense all the way around. Right. I don't say every deal I got to make ten grand. Right. It's just you made thirteen hundred bucks. Right. Right. Yeah. Some deals if they're fast and easy, and I make two three grand, 
I'm just as happy, you know, no big deal. So depending on the deal, depending on the person and the JVs, I JV with people all the time, you mm -hmm. know. It's just every every deal is going to be a little bit different. You know, usually I split deals 50-50 today. Yep. It's no big deal, you know, even if I do more work than the other person. Mm -hmm. um, but I just don't, you know, I get a lot of people that call me. Yep. And they, they call me the JV after they exhausted everything that they know and they can't sell the deal. It's why? Because they got it too high. Right. Right? In nine times out of ten. So yep. that those type of deals it was never a deal. Right. So And unfortunately they didn't listen to your advice in the beginning and where you should have got the price or, or whatever the case may be. Um they come to you and say you just have to tell them no, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, because the thing is, even though it's been out there, it's been out there for so so much that everybody's seen it. And right. if they were going to lowball, they would have lowballed already. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. So to refresh the marketing, there would have to be a substantial price drop. Right. Yeah. 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 You know? Uh, so, you know, with that, how can people get in touch with you if they do want to JV with you? But bring it in the beginning of the deal, okay? In the beginning of the deal. Yeah. All right? So how can we? Yeah, so the best number for, for, for me to reach out to me is 313-329-7878. Um, Again, 313-329-7877. You know, that goes to my call rail number. That goes right to my cell phone. And once I get to know you, I'll lock you in my cell phone. I'll give you my cell phone number. Mm -hmm. um, this is just where I keep track of everything. But, um, yeah, that's the best number if you, you know, want a JV or mm -hmm. if you have any questions, you know, text is the best way to reach me. If I don't answer, text me. And um, let's do business together. Help most, each other out. Most definitely. And if you ever do want to JV with me as well, my contact info is at the bottom, in, in the bottom uh, description as well. So uh, I highly recommend working with this gentleman right here. He has a lot of buyers. I have a lot of buyers. We all do. We go around to these meetups. And, you know, the biggest thing is, is that the reason why we give our advice is because we listen to our buyers. Ain't that right? Yep. You know? We listen to the market change, and we ask our buyers every single either meetup or every single intercha interchange conversation with our buyers, what are you doing now? What's going on? What yeah. are you changing? You know? Yeah. Um, things like that. Right. You might, you go to a meetup and say, you know, there's people that I know some buyers where I know they, they, they're not cash buyers. And they don't use hard money, but they they got a really seamless process where they could they could do a quick loan. Mm -hmm. They don't even need an appraisal, all right. So if someone needs an appraisal, that might be not be for some of my deals, right? Because we're not waiting for all that, you know. <laughs> so it just depends. So different every every buyer has their ways of doing things, and it cha and like you said, it changes, it changes depending on the you know the climate. The climate, the market conditions, yeah. uh, what the Fed's done, what the, you know, everything's different. Yeah. It it could be because he, you know, one buyer just tweaked his back, so now he has to hire everything out when he used to do everything. You never know. Could be anything. You yeah. know, so uh, you know, always talk to your buyers. Always get updates on the market and where they're at. So, I, uh, you know. With that being said, uh, any link in the description, you know, we'll have his contact information. We'll, you'll have mine as well. Um, go ahead and reach out, and we'll have to talk. I'm going to bring him on a little bit more. We'll make do something more like this again, and see what we can do. So, um, with that, you know, let's all do deals together. Like, subscribe, comment. Let me know if you've made it to the end of this video. And have a good day.
was once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room